Hi there. My name is Ben Warner and I'm the co-host of the SciTech Culture podcast um, along with my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. This is a bit of a different video today. As you can see, I've actually got a background behind me um, uh, instead of the white background that you normally see. Normally, you would see Steve and I or hear Steve and I um, talking about um, science, technology and culture topics on a weekly basis. Uh, but recently, we actually had to take uh, you know around five, six weeks off, and I just wanted to address that um, as to why that occurred. Normally, it's because of a holiday or uh, that one of us is on or something like that. Uh, but unfortunately, on this occasion, uh, the reason why we had to have the break was because of um, an unexpected medical issue that I had to deal with, which was a diagnosis of myxofibrosarcoma. Now, Myxofibrosarcoma um, is quite a rare diagnosis. It only accounts for 2% of all cancer diagnosis. And uh, where I actually got it, which was on my left middle finger, that's even rare for a sarcoma. Um, so I thought I'd do this video because um, when I, you know, obviously when you get uh, news like this, you go online and you start researching, <laughs> you know, what you have and all that sort of thing. But when I did that for this, um, I actually didn't find much uh, information um, or to know what to expect or how it was going to go or what the implications were or anything like that. So the whole purpose behind this video, it really is just to... Uh, give you an overview of uh, like what my, my experience was like. So any of you that have uh, find yourselves in a, a similar position can kind of get an idea of what to expect. So back in May of this year, so 2022, if you happen to be watching this later, um, I happened to notice a lump on my left middle finger in the middle knuckle joint. Um, I actually thought I hit it against something really hard when, when I hadn't noticed, you know how we do that sometimes, and I thought it had just swollen up and that it would just go away within a few weeks. When it didn't, um, that was when obviously I was a little bit more concerned and thought it might have been a cyst or something like that. So my GP referred me to have some ultrasounds done. They couldn't really tell what it was other than it looked like a fluidy sort of uh, capsule over the top of my knuckle. Um, GP also referred me to have an MRI, which was obviously an interesting experience being in that uh, claustrophobic environment. I'm fine with that usually, but it was still interesting to go through. The first red flag though was that after the report came back from the MRI, the attending doctor that day that ran the MRI actually requested an update on what the final um, outcome or diagnosis of this was because they hadn't seen what this was before. So that was kind of my first clue that something might have been up. But at this point, I still wasn't feeling like it was a cancer or anything like that. So the next thing was uh, my GP referred me to a hand surgeon. Now, the hand surgeon took a look at it felt it was a bit soft and um, sort of uh, fluidy like so I didn't think it was a cancer per se. But she said, just for safety's sake, just get it cut out. So in the middle of September, I actually went in to do that. Curious thing was she actually couldn't originally get me in until February of next year, so 2023. I'll come back to that later because that's actually kind of important. So I got it done. I had a nice big bandage on my middle finger um, that I couldn't get wet. I had to maintain it for a week. And then um, I just went about my went about my business really because I didn't think anything of it really. But it was only when I went to reattend uh, the, the hand surgeon in a follow-up appointment where she kind of hit me with the pathology results from the lump, which was um, the diagnosis of myxofibrosarcoma. And she didn't sugarcoat it. Um, she thought I could obviously take it because um, she, she said she ummed and ahmed about whether to tell me directly given she wasn't the specialist. But she basically said, you know, they might try some chemotherapy or some radiotherapy, but ultimately what needs to happen is your finger needs to be removed to prevent any possible further spread. Now, when I heard that, the oxygen got got sucked out of the room for me. You can, as you can imagine, I got felt really hot and warm, and uh, almost felt like throwing up. But I sort of collected myself after five minutes, and then she said that uh, the sarcoma um, specialists are actually based in Melbourne, so I was kind of lucky in that regard. At this point, I kind of went into a little bit of denial, saying, "Well, maybe I should just wait for what the specialist has to say before I, you know, completely accept that my finger is going to be removed." Now, I went and saw the sarcoma specialist, and yes, that's what ended up having to happen. That's what she told me um, needed to happen. The reason was, and she showed me on the MRI, that the sarcoma had spread all the way around my finger. Basically, they'd have to cut away 80% of my middle finger in order to prevent any further spread, which at that point, it made more logical sense to remove the whole finger and then reconstruct my hand so that I could still, you know, get function out of it afterwards. So, yeah, th that was that. And it was all very quick. Um, that was on the Monday. Then that following Saturday, I went in and had the surgery done. 
they made me feel really um, calm and relaxed and um, it was all all over in about an hour and a half. As you can see um, uh, with, with this video that I shot literally five minutes after waking up um, from the sarcoma um, surgery. Well, I'm out. Apparently it took even quicker than what I was expected. Apparently it was only half an hour instead of 90 minutes. As you can see, I'm down to four fingers now. Um, seems remarkably straightforward, really. Um, I just have to keep my, um, I don't know, just have to wake up now. Um, after the anesthetic and everything, but yeah, all went fairly well. Yeah, I had a massive bandage on my hand that I had to keep clean um, and not get wet for about three weeks. Um, when I went back for the follow-up appointment, the bandage came off and um, it was quite interesting to see my new hand for the first time. I didn't feel too much pain. Um, it, it's, it felt um, still quite stiff, as you can imagine, after just having had a finger removed from it. And uh, that was that, that really, um, it all kind of uh, came into place well. It was at that appointment that the sarcoma specialist actually said that it was good that it got done now. Um, and I refer back to that uh, comment I made earlier about um, the initial appointment having only been done, uh, I might have only been able to get in February the following year. If it had waited until that long, um, the cancer might have spread into my hand and caused um, much bigger issues for me. So I'm super lucky that it kind of played out the way that it did because the end pathology results on my finger that was removed um, showed that it was clear of all margins, which effectively means that the cancer didn't come close to spreading into my hand. But I'll still have to go in for um, continual scans over the next few years to see if uh, there's any issues um, or any cancer that reappears anywhere else. So after that, it was mainly just uh, recovery. So that was two months ago that I had the surgery, just making sure that um, I get recovery in my hand using stress balls and and doing all that sort of thing. The only unusual thing in my case was that instead of going to the a hand surgeon straight off and getting the, the, the lump cut out, normally what happens is a biopsy is usually done, but the end result was still the same. The sarcoma specialist basically said one way or the other, the finger was going to be removed. And the reason for that is that sarcomas are particularly aggressive. So there it is, um, my experience with uh, sarcoma. Just to clarify something I said earlier, I said myxofibrosarcoma um, accounts for 2% of all cancer diagnoses. That actually wasn't quite correct. Sarcomas in general account for 2% of all cancer diagnoses, of which myxofibrosarcoma is a particular type. There are actually various different types, um, despite the fact that they're quite rare. All in all, I feel super lucky and that I dodged um, a fairly serious cancer bullet um, with a very simple solution, even though, you know, Losing a finger is not always fun, <laughs> as you can imagine, or desirable, but it's definitely better than the alternative um, of cancer spread um, and whatnot. So I feel very lucky um, in that from that respect. One other thing that's uh, worth mentioning too, as it was explained to me by the specialist, is that um, sarcomas are um, completely random. So basically anyone can get them. Uh, they don't have a cause or an explanation that they've been able to determine um, like why people get them. Uh, so no genetic lifestyle factors, nothing like that, like you might expect from other cancers. Uh, so that was something new to learn and um, put it all in perspective and uh, probably why I hadn't even really heard anything about it before. Most of the information that I found online dealt with um, people who had uh, dealt with sarcomas where they were deeper in the body, particularly in the limbs, um, and that causes a lot more trouble. Although you know, modern medicine and how great it is these days. Basically, surgeons are able to do a lot of limb recovery surgery um, so that, that, you know, whole limbs don't have to be amputated or anything like that. Uh, but still, um, it's not, um, not something pleasant to go through and there's always complications in that regard. So as odd as this sounds, getting it in the finger was actually the best possible place to get it if I was going to get it. I hope this was uh, a useful video for you and provided some, uh, at least a perspective on uh, what to expect with this type of thing. For any of you that uh, get it in a finger or a toe, this is likely the progression of how it'll kind of play out. For any of you that do get it, um, you know, I wish you all, um, wish you all well and uh, that uh, there aren't any further complications from it. And as for the rest of us, um, it's a reminder um, that we need to take our health seriously and uh, also not to take it for granted. So that's it. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back into the SciTech Culture podcast um, and uh, looking forward to talking about all the topics that Steve and I usually talk about. I wish you all the best um, and uh, stay safe and healthy.